a turbulent year for Australian companies in 2022. I've summarised the highs and lows of the year in corporate Australia, from the Optus and Medibank scandals to the failed demerger and hostile takeover of AGL. We've covered it all during the year. So here's a snapshot of some of the major interviews we've done with Australian executives over the past 12 months. The movers, the shakers, the shakedowns and the takeovers. 2022 had it all. Let's rewind and look at the biggest headlines and scandals of the year. Not one, but two major data breaches. First, Optus. My hope is that through this terrible incident, we all learn, we get stronger, and we become better. Not just at Optus, which we're fully committed to do, but also share those lessons more broadly so the whole of Australia can get stronger and better. And then, Medibank. Uh, this is a malicious attack to uh, create the most harm and uncertainty for our customers in the community. A growing trend of cyber attacks targeting Aussie companies, leaving consumers exposed, vulnerable and concerned. From the high rollers that finally got rolling. It's a conditional opening and we still could find them unsuitable if after 18 months, two years, we're not satisfied that they're suitable, then we could still go into a process which would ultimately mean they fall for the licence. We've increased our responsible gaming team by 60%. We've overhauled the board, the management, and we've driven this change across every part of the organisation. And I think we do recognise we have a social licence to operate alongside our regulatory licence. And if you lose the social licence to operate because you lose the trust and respect of a the community, then that's a pretty bad business model. Yeah. To those who ground to a halt, the Star Entertainment Group has been fined $100 million by the New South Wales gaming regulator in response to breaches at its Sydney casino. The Star's Sydney casino licence will be suspended from Friday. 2022 has been the year of takeovers and buyouts from resources with BHP and Oz Minerals to banking with Suncorp selling its consumer banking division to ANZ and to energy with the Brookfield proposal to buy Origin. Whilst at times it all seemed like downright mutiny. I think it's quite clear that the company needs a plan for a more aggressive transition away from its fossil fuel generating assets. That's for a number of different reasons. Firstly, they're generating very expensive power. They're incredibly unreliable, as we've just seen. We had two breakdowns in the last month, resulting in a more than almost $120 million write-off in profits. An energy crisis that's seen soaring commodity prices and the cost of living woes echoed around the country. There have been some winners amongst all this uncertainty. Ukraine produces about 80 million tonnes a year of grain. It represents about a third of the global market for traded grain. So it's really important in feeding the world. That's clearly been disrupted. Uh, right at the moment, they're coming out of the winter there. So uh, it's a bit unknown uh, what's going to happen with the upcoming crop. But it's fair to say it's going to be disrupted at least for the next year and possibly a number of years. Achieving great things for those in need. We deployed some of our products, portables, at the start of the Ukrainian war under the uh, under military aid program from, from one of the European governments. And while some innovation inspired, others didn't transpire. It's been technology they've been trying to implement for all of this time. They've had troubles, technical troubles along the way. And even though they say it is delayed at this stage, effectively it seems to be dead in the water. While getting off the ground led to a boom for some post-COVID. What we are saying, though, is that we do have to cover this oil price, like all businesses do. Um, and we, we are seeing oil being 80% higher this quarter than it was before COVID, 60% in the year. We've got a, a billion dollar extra to pay this year that we did in 19 with less flying. So we are saying that the airfares have to go up a rask. It was not necessarily a win for consumers. Qantas has become one of this year's biggest brands to receive a Shonky Award after extensive criticism. The consumer advocacy group Choice says the awards are given to brands that have ripped off Australian consumers. From overseas hackers to Aussie-led innovation, takeovers, makeovers and everything in between, we've seen and done it all this year. What will 2023 have in store?